folks, it's Wendy. I thought I would spend a little bit of time today and give you some of the tips and tricks that I've learned most of them the hard way on how to resin your acrylic pour paintings that are on canvas. So here we go. So one of the first things that I recommend if you're going to resin your paintings is to get a halfway decent canvas. Uh, I found that the back stapled canvases, the staples on the edges, just create more of an opportunity for the resin to slide underneath the, the tape, because in some cases the, the staples are very, very close to the edge. I get these canvases, uh, they're called, uh, by Creative Mark, they're called The Edge from Jerry's Artorama. Now they're only the three, the 11 16th inch width, um, but they are gallery wrapped. And they're, they're pretty decent prices. So I get them in bulk and I get a, a bunch of them at the time. You only have one stable to, to deal with on the, um, on the canvas itself. Now the reason I go with an 11 16th canvas as opposed to the thicker one inch or two or one and a half inch or two inch canvases is because I take a lot of my paintings to art fairs and I wrap them and I put them into tubs. If I have the thicker ones, I can bring less paintings. <laughs> That's the only reason I get the thinner uh, silhouette so that I can fit more paintings to bring and and they have um the edge has these sizes in this 11 16th width in just about every size you can imagine um and like i said it's it's a very it's a very reasonable price for these canvases it's almost as cheap as as the back stapled so i go with these now when i prep my canvases I use uh, painter's tape and I make it just a little bit on the inside of the edge of the canvas. Not enough to make like a bubble of the resin to stick too hard um, to the canvas itself. I want it on the tape, on the tape, but enough so that the paint, when I paint it, wraps a, a little bit so that I don't have any of the um, any of the white of the canvas showing. And then press it down really hard so that the paint and the resin curls over the top of it, not underneath it. I've had that happen, in, especially on the edges. So that's what I do to make sure that I, I, I do the best I can there. Resin works best in a room that is 75 to 85 degrees. So I have this heater that I use, especially in the winter. And I turn it on and make sure it's at least 75 degrees and it's on automatic. It will stay that way. I leave it to make sure it's at least 75 for 12 to 16 hours. So I usually do my resin in the evening. I make sure that this stays on and keeps the room warm overnight and that helps any residual bubbles that are that I didn't see when I resined it to to pop. The other reason to use the heater which I have over there is before you resin. So if I'm going to resin in the evening in the morning of that day I will come and turn the heater on. That's going to help my resin come to about 75 degrees or 80 even. So I make sure that my resin is warm as well. When your painting is done, and before you go to resin, take a look at the back. So this painting has already been, been done, it's dry, it's ready to resin. What I'm gonna tell you is, do your best if you haven't already done so when the paint was wet, to wipe the drips off. It's not to get the drips off so much as it is to create a nice little uh, lip of paint 
between the canvas and the tape. That's going to help when you try to take the tape off after it's been resined. So this one isn't very good right now, like over here. So I'm actually going to come in with some paint and paint over it, especially since I have some spots here that show. So I'm going to paint over to make sure that there's a lip of paint. And I'll show you what that, how that looks when we actually take the resin off. So the next thing I do before I resin is I take my water bottle and I spray the back. This is going to make the canvas a little bit more taut and it's going to help keep the resin from pulling away from the edges and leaving you with with a line on the edge. You may still get one, but this is going to be this is going to minimize it. So I'm going to try and get underneath You don't need too much, and you can pretty much tell almost immediately it becomes very taut. So, hear that? Nice and taut. So, it's going to help keep the, the uh, resin from pooling in the middle and leaving you with a line on the edge. Okay, so now it's time to mix the resin up. And I have, over time, written out a list of how many ounces I need for each canvas. Now these are both 11 by 14s, and I have figured out that it's, I need five ounces of resin each, so I'm gonna mix up 10. I never do more than two canvases together at the same time. I probably could do more, but I'm worried about not having enough time before the resin, which only gives you 45 minutes of work time of starting to congeal before I'm done messing with it. So I'm gonna mix up 10 ounces. Okay, so I have mixed up 10 ounces of resin, five ounces each by volume, not by weight, by volume. So I use these measuring cups. Go by whatever instructions your resin has. I use art resin because I'm used to it and I like the, the texture, it works for me. Other people use different brands. It depends on your style, just like the painting or the, the, the paint recipe. It, it's based on your style and, and what works for you. So this works for me. So I've mixed it all up. I was scraping the edges as I went. Now, I have all of my other tools over here. I've got tweezers to get little bits out. I've got my torch and I've got my spreader. I found that I am not very good at making sure that I don't have pools of resin in the middle. So I bought this spreader. It's a 3 16th tooth and I had to break off the very edges because it was creating a, a line in there. But this really helps me and I bought them off of Amazon. They're cheap. I buy like five at a time. I use it for a couple of months as I'm as I'm doing paintings and then it fills up a little too much in the in the teeth with uh, resin, uh, even though I wipe them down as best I can. Um, so I throw them out and I buy some more. So I'm ready to go. I've got my spreader. I've got all of my other tools and now right before I go to pour resin on it I'm going to wipe or brush off anything that might be on the surface of these because as they sit and dry they might have picked up some dust so I'm just gonna yeah I just saw some stuff that went flying off of this Now I'm going to I'm going to turn this because it's easier for me. You may not see the whole thing, but it's easier for me. Um, I'll put this one in in sight for you. Now I'm going to pour the resin and I want to get 5 ounces on each one. And I neglected to tell you how I figured out how much 
resin I need for each size. It's roughly a square inch calculation. What I figured is that for every 40 square inches, I need about an ounce of resin. So when I took an 11 by 14, I multiplied 11 times 14, I get 154 divided by 40, whatever it was came out to about five ounces. I probably have more than I need, but I'd rather have a little bit more than not have enough. Even though, again, 45 minutes work time, you can actually make another batch if you need to, if you don't have enough. So I'm gonna try and put five ounces on each one of these two. And it, the directions tell you not to scrape the edges, but I constantly scrape the edges as I'm mixing it. So I'm not too worried about that. If you're going to scrape the edges when you pour, make sure that you've scraped constantly as you mix. So here we go. What did I get there? That was about four. I'm gonna put another one in here, another ounce. See, that's probably, that's probably enough. I probably have more than I need. So, and then I'm gonna do this one. I probably don't need to, even need to scrape. Now, if I wanna use this, if I wanna use this cup again, what I'm gonna do is get a plastic cup, because I've got a lot of paintings to, to resin today. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this plastic cup, I'm gonna turn this one upside down so that any residual resin will drip out while I'm doing this paint, these paintings. So I'm gonna set that aside. All right, now I am going to heat them up. I wanna get rid of as many bubbles as I can as often as I can. And heating them up also helps them, helps it to be able to spread easier. Okay, so now I take my spreader and I'm gonna go to the edges and then just pour it right off the edge. A little bit at a time, make sure I have enough. Yeah, see that was, that was plenty. I could probably do this in four ounces. Okay, now that I've got all the, all the edges, I wanna make sure that I don't have too much. And I'm gonna go this way so you can maybe see how it builds up as I move the scraper across. See, I have extra. And then I'm gonna do this one this way. Don't have to do too much. Okay, now I'm gonna wipe that down with a paper towel. Keep as much buildup down as possible. Put that aside. And I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna try and make sure that all of the edges have some resin on them. And if I have to, I pull stuff off the paper underneath it. Okay, that one looks good. Next, is to hit it with the torch. So we're gonna come over here. I'm not sure you're gonna be able to see a lot of the bubbles that are in here, but I'm gonna, actually, this is when I pull out my chair. I'm gonna sit here so that I can see it at an angle with the lighting over, over here. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna hit it with the torch, remove as many bubbles as possible. all the way. Okay, now, despite my best efforts, there are always a piece of lint or a bubble that won't pop with the torch. So right now I can see there's a little piece right here I have some little pieces. So I'm gonna take some time. I may take up to 
15 minutes looking over each and every one of them. The biggest problem is the, the bubbles that won't pop with the torch. And sometimes I have to lift it up and look at it at an angle under the light to see if I see anything. And I see one right here. And I keep looking and I keep looking and I double check and triple check and quadruple check and make sure I don't see anything. And I see a couple of little tiny pieces of lint that fell afterwards. Those I'm not too worried about, they tend to sink. What I'm worried about are the ones that create um, a divot or a, uh, a mound. And those are the ones I'm mostly concerned about. All right, so I don't see anything else. The next thing is to make sure that I get as many of the drips off as possible. So I'm gonna come here and do this on both of them. This again is gonna help with getting the tape off. Okay, now they go into the baker's rack with the cover to keep dust off them while they cure. I'll show you that in a minute. I have a baker's rack with a nice cover to it. So I do a few paintings at a time when I do my resin. And then when they're all done and ready to cure, I will shut the cover down. Sometimes I zip it, most of the times I don't really need to. And now no dust will get over that. And I can still work in my workroom. Okay, now that it's been three days and the resin is cured, it's time to take the tape off the back. So first thing I'm gonna do is pull all of the big thumbtacks off that I use to elevate the canvas. Now, because when I was done painting this one, I didn't have enough paint on the tape, I actually came through and painted over it so that I would have this nice barrier between the resin and the tape. And that's what helps this to come off very easily. And I'll show you how I do it. I just pull the tape up and I pull it as far as I can, nice and gently. If it doesn't come up, I'm gonna use a heat gun. So this one comes up nice. I'm just gonna bend it a couple of times. And then I'm gonna come over here and just pull it right up. Now it might leave a couple of high spots from some of the uh, bubbles, but I'll just come through afterwards and give it a light sanding with, with some sandpaper just to make sure it, that those high spots don't rip somebody's wall. So this is one of the older canvases that I used. Um, it's the back stapled. And as you can see, the tape likes to stick to it and pull up the gesso on it. Um, it's just not quite as nice of a canvas, that's all. Um, but the tape comes off quite well because there's paint between the tape and the resin, and it just glides right off. Didn't have to heat it up or anything. If I don't have enough paint on the tape, before I resin, then I wind up having to use a heat gun to melt the, the resin enough to pull it up without pulling all the gesso off. So there you have it. How to get a nice, clear, smooth resin coating onto your pour painting.